reaping the reward. Harvest is in full swing ahead on Grow. Visit a local elevator to see how they're keeping trucks rolling. And as we look at next planting season, experts raise concerns about a BT trait that's not as effective as advertised. Um, but we shouldn't consider them to be silver bullets. News you can use on your farm coming up. And local ethanol plants change hands. How that could keep dollars in Nebraska. Get ready to grow. Welcome to the program, reaping the reward. Harvest is in full swing and elevators are working to keep trucks moving quickly. Around 200 trucks roll through a day at the Aurora West grain facility right now. Soybeans are pretty well wrapped up and it's mostly corn coming into the elevator now. They don't see many small trucks, mostly large semis full of grain. Farms and machinery have certainly gotten bigger as we know and the grain arrives in a hurry. Some of these guys got 16 row heads and four trucks and boy, if you don't have the speed, they'll just bury you in a hurry, you know, especially some of these smaller town elevators. So these newer terminals like we have here, they can keep up. At this location, the word from farmers is the corn looked good, but didn't finish as well as hoped. The USDA has forecast record corn production in Nebraska, but it remains to be seen if that will happen. And as long as the days are, elevator employees say give it another 10 days and they'll be wrapping up already. Now to the latest crop report. The USDA says heavy morning dews limited harvest progress, especially for those finishing soybeans last week. And on corn, harvest more than a third complete, just a little behind average. More than half of the sorghum crop has been harvested and soybeans about two thirds complete statewide. 90% of winter wheat well, it's been planted and now emerged. It's ahead of average. Conditions rate mostly good. More dollars may stay in Nebraska with local ethanol plants under new management. The Nebraska Ethanol Board discussed the state of the industry during a meeting in Kearney last week. Plants in Ravenna and York were recently sold and in both cases are now owned by Nebraska based companies, which may bring stability to those operations. These are now plants that had one time been owned and operated by international companies and so sometimes the profits tend to be um, in, in some ways diffused because they're being shipped out of the state. We have locally owned companies like Kappa for example which a lot of Nebraska shareholders and so when those companies are profitable they can distribute those shareholders to the local economy, distribute the, the profits into the local economy. Ethanol leaders also discussed safety and sharing best practices, like working with first responders to make sure they're trained if there was a problem at a local plant. To make sure that we're working on compliance issues and regulatory issues and safety issues so that these plants not, are not only sustainable but safe places to work. The ethanol sectors had a, a real good safety record and we want to make sure that we continue to make this to be a good place to work and a safe place to work. Sneller says there are always new regulations coming down and the recent meeting was a chance to review them. We've seen lots of cover crops going in following soybean and seed corn harvest. Radishes, turnips, canola, rye. We asked growers if they're planning to plant cover crops this fall. Here's the response we got on Twitter. About half say yes, they are using cover crops. The other half say no. And a few folks undecided. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and join the discussion. Bug experts are speaking out about a corn trait that doesn't seem to be doing the job. Western bean cutworm was a problem in Nebraska this year, especially in the central part of the state. For the most part, experts say BT corn has been a huge advantage. Really the adoption of the GMO traits have been um, by and far a, a really a positive thing for agriculture and for our food supply. Um, you know, I think right now my main concerns are with resistance management. Um, you know, we have these great tools, um, but we shouldn't consider them to be silver bullets. There's a BT trade in corn that has been advertised as providing outstanding protection against western bean cutworm. But entomologists across the country have written an open letter saying it's not working. Here's more from our interview with Julie Peterson of Nebraska Extension. 
Cry1F, which is one of the proteins that uh, does have some effectiveness against western bean cutworm. Uh, it's the protein that's found in Herculex and Smart Stacks and some of our other common BT hybrids. Uh, we are seeing some issues with this protein. When the protein first came on the market in 2001, uh, there was about an 80% effectiveness. So we are definitely seeing uh, quite a bit less than that. In the state of Nebraska, we've been seeing problems uh, mostly in the southwest part of the state and the central Platte River Valley for several years. Um, however, this year it's been interesting. There have been problems with western bean cutworm and cry1f performance um, further east of us. Ohio State and Penn State and Michigan State and, and several different folks saying they've got some concerns. Absolutely. I think it's definitely an issue that needs more attention drawn to it. This cry1f protein uh, really does not have strong control. Um, in some areas it does give some moderate control, but then again in those areas of Nebraska where we've seen problems, uh, we should not be expecting it to control western bean. If this protein is not maybe as effective as has been advertised, what are some of the things that, that growers need to keep in mind in terms of uh, doing some control out in the field? Scouting is highly recommended uh, whenever the moths are at their peak flight, which in Nebraska, uh, the flight starts in late June to early July. Maybe if you're just relying on that protein and you're not doing any spraying, what, what kind of potential uh, outcomes could you see if, if that's allowed to go untreated? So at a level of uh, one caterpillar per ear, uh, we can see uh, you know, up to 15 bushels per acre yield loss. We're at the time of year where we're harvesting, we're thinking about next year, seed selection. What, what kinds of things uh, do you want uh, farmers to keep in mind? Definitely whenever you're looking at your hybrid selections for next year, looking at that BT trait package is really important. So in addition to the Cry1F protein, which we've just discussed as not having as much um, effectiveness as it used to, there is one other called the VIP3A. Um, we are seeing quite good control. Uh, this is in the Viptera and some other types of um, hybrids. But, you know, over the last couple of years, we've been dealing with um, the glyphosate resistant weeds. That's a weed issue, but is there a resistance issue with BT? Is that something that we are seeing with some of these BT uh, protein traits? Absolutely, um, and there really are quite a few parallels we can draw between some of our weed resistance problems and our insect resistance problems as well. Um, but our BT traits, uh, we do have problems with resistance with our uh, western corn rootworm beetles. Um, and now, of course, as we've just discussed, we're seeing problems with western bean cutworm, uh, the caterpillar and BT as well. So um, really using those refuge requirements, um, rotating with mode of action if you're using insecticides, uh, you know, sticking to those uh, integrated resistance management and really using IPM um, can help us to try to keep those tools that we do have for longer uh, so that we don't run out of options to be able to control pests. Neighbors plan a harvest bee after a farmer in northeast Nebraska died in an unusual accident this week. Philip Hennig of Takema drove through a cloud of anhydrous ammonia following a pipeline break. Hennig farmed and we're told was involved in 4-H for decades, especially shooting in sports. Now neighbors say they'll come together to harvest his corn following this tragedy. I have to help him and get his crops out and be with the family. Bill Method and Hennig went to church and school together for years. The owners of the pipeline say they're not sure how it happened. Our industry has been improving over the years and when we have an incident like last night, it's it's a setback. More folks have been allowed back to their homes, but the investigation still continues. Cattlemen weigh in on a proposal from the CME Group. The United States Cattlemen's Association issued a statement on the announcement made by the CME Group this week that a proposal is being considered to switch to a cash settlement process for its live futures. The CME Group also announced modifications to the physical delivery process would be considered. Cattlemen say changes are needed, but the changes announced this week will not address the concerns they have. Cattlemen say the proposal to switch to a cash settlement is a step in the wrong direction. Later, kids learn about livestock. Up next, Maryland visits with America's Pig Farmer of the Year.